In this lecture, I will explain you sampling and sampling theorems. These are basically the part of the digital communication techniques. Okay. So whatever we are studying now and what, what we have studied in the previous lecture, they are based on digital communication, not analog communication. Analog communication we already covered in the previous term. Okay. So we will be covering now the sampling theorem, which is very important from the examination point of view as well. First of all, I am writing the definition of sampling theorem. So it is a continuous time signal can be completely represented in its samples. in its samples and recovered back recovered back if the sampling frequency if the sampling frequency which is known as fs is greater than or equal to the twice of highest frequency component of the message signal okay which is okay let us let us put it in different color okay message signal f m okay and the condition is i will write the condition of sampling theorem here first f s is greater than equal to twice f m very important condition you need to remember it i will explain you now now so basically a continuous time signal can be completely represented in its samples and recovered back because we are talking about the digital techniques now so we don't want the continuous signal we want a digital signal digital signal what is the digital signal which is which is in the pulses form like one and zero form this is basically the digital signal we want the digital signal so what we need to do is we need to convert the continuous time signal into the digital signal okay but see it is written a continuous time signal can be completely represented in its samples and recovered back because you all know first of all when the signal is transmitted so continuous time signal will be will be converted into the digital signal okay and then after that digital signal will be converted into the continuous time signal okay you all know like the example of a mobile or maybe even i am speaking and i am using that microphone okay or or a mic yeah mic is in my hand basically so what i am speaking is the continuous time signal whatever operations are doing in the mic is the digital signal and then what the audience is listening again the continuous time signal so what is happening the continuous time signal is is changing into digital time and then digital signal is again changing into the continuous time signal you understood this so for this we require a sampling frequency basically what what is the criteria what is the condition that the message signal will be recovered back original original message signal without no disturbance without disturbance so what will happen recovered back if the sampling frequency fs is greater than or equal to the twice of highest frequency of the message signal okay so fs is greater than equal to 2 fm so this is the condition so when when you need to draw this how how you are going to draw this so first of all i make a continuous time signal you all know continuous time signal is in which form the sinusoidal form so i can write it is a continuous signal okay and now this is a pulse train pulse train means it's having some samples 
so its time period is ts and the frequency is fs and now we multiply continuous signal and pulse train we multiply continuous signal and pulse train so when we multiply and when this fs this frequency is greater than or equal to 2 fm fm is the frequency of our message signal so when this condition satisfied then and only then we can recover our original signal back otherwise there will be dis distortion in the signal there will be noise in the signal okay so like you can see that how how we are going to draw this signal when in exam so what you will do you will just draw a continuous time signal like this and then you will show the pulses like this okay so you will show the message signal with the dotted line and pulses with the normal solid line okay so this is the way how you draw in the exam so this is basically the sampling theorem if in exam it comes write the definition of the sampling signal then you need to write these five lines whatever i have written exactly same like this you need to make these continuous time signal pulse train and this final final signal final recovering back signal and you need to write this condition this all constitute the sampling theorem and this thing okay now let us consider a message signal okay so x t let us suppose x t equals to sine 2 pi t plus sine 3 pi t plus sine 4 pi t this is our message signal okay let us suppose so if you need to find out the frequency what is f1 what is f2 and what is f3 so it's very simple so suppose i i say omega 1 equals to 2 pi you can you can see that okay it's basically sine omega 1 t so omega 1 equals to 2 pi and then i can write 2 pi f1 equals to 2 pi 2 pi 2 pi cancel and f1 equals to 2 from here i can see f1 equals to okay let us let us find out for you so from here it is saying sine omega 2 t so omega 2 equals to 3 pi that means 2 pi f2 equals to 3 pi and pi pi cancel and what will be f2 it will be 3 by 2 that is equal to 1.5 from here it is sine omega 3 t that means omega 3 equals to 4 pi that means 2 pi f3 equals to 4 pi and pi pi is cancelled and f3 will be equal to 4 by 2 equals to 2 so from here i can deduce f1 equals to 2 f2 equals to 1.5 and f3 equals to 2 okay so now what is the maximum maximum of all these frequency so fm equals to maximum of fm f2 and f3 which is 2 right frequency means what does the frequency means frequency means in a time interval it must appear two times okay this is basically two times if if fm is three then means in a time interval like suppose this is this is a total time interval so frequency is one two and three four and five okay so this is the frequency so it must appear these times so this is a frequency now the next thing i want to explain is suppose this is a message signal let us copy this signal wait okay suppose this this is the message signal here okay and let us see the pulse train 
and suppose this is a pearl strain now i am drawing the pearl strain in the previous example whenever i was drawing the pearl strain the the samples were very close to each other okay okay so this is the pearl strain in this case so what will happen when we are recovering the signal back we will not be able to recover the signal back so suppose the signal we get this and suppose we get this and suppose we get this so only this signal we will be recovering back you understood this Okay, so instead of getting this signal, this sinusoidal waveform, what we are getting? We are getting this distorted signal. Okay, so so I can write here, this is my message signal. Okay, this is the pearl strain. So I can say frequency is less that that is in one time period it is appearing less times it is appearing less time okay so this is the pearl strain and this is the recovered signal that means it is not fully recovered okay so so basically when fs equals to 2 fm that is basically nyquist rate that means to get the signal fully recovered the fs must be equal to twice fm or greater than twice fm okay so this is the nyquist rate now there is another thing in this is the aliasing very important thing what is aliasing now let us suppose let us suppose this is the message signal okay let us suppose this is the message signal and whatever signal i am receiving the recovered signal is basically okay like this like this like this so this is my recovered signal so i'm not getting the same signal as the message signal i'm getting like this so this thing here like this and here this is known as aliasing okay so i can write this is my message signal and this is my recover signal so overlapping is basically known as aliasing okay so i can write the definition of aliasing here when a band limited signal is sampled at rate lower than nyquist rate that means fs if it is less than 2 fm then the spectrum of sampled signal overlaps overlap with the neighboring ones that means that means the signal is under sampled okay or under sampled it can be over sampled also so that means it is basically known as aliasing effect so remember what what you need to remember is see this is the message signal and this is the overlapping happening happening that means aliasing that means it is not satisfying the nyquist criteria this is our nyquist criteria 
if f is equals to 2 fm or greater than 2 fm if this is satisfying that means there we can recover the original signal back but if it is fs is less than 2 fm then we cannot recover the original signal back it can be distorted it can be uh, it can be overlapping anything can happen with the signal okay so always remember to recover the original signal the fs must be greater than or equal to twice fm this is known as the sampling theorem and this is the condition is the Nyquist rate you need to remember the condition okay so this is all about the sampling theorem so in exam basically what will happen you you will be asked to write the definition of the sampling theorem you can uh, you can be asked to write the condition you can be asked to explain the aliasing effect so you need to you need to make these these um, message signal and the recover signal you have to write the condition and you have to write the definitions so this is all about the Nyquist rate sampling theorem and aliasing Thank you.